Hello, America, and welcome to Xandermonium, the talk show that gets you talking. I'm Xander Gibb, and on today's show, we'll be checking out the comedy stylings of New York comedian Georgie Porgy. I'm looking at my video diary documenting my journey back to health and fitness. More to come in a mere moment. Now, as always, you can interact with me via Twitter. You can tweet me at Xander Gibb, that's X-A-N-D-E-R-G-I-B-B, -B, capital X, capital G. Make sure you follow and keep up to date with what's going on on the show on a world of mind-blowing information. And now it's time for Xander's Soapbox. <laughs> So as the seasons change and the weather gets a little colder and we make sure there are extra blankets around for these cold snaps, we begin to miss the sunshine on warm days. Now, not being a winter person, I tend to dread the cold, darker days as it makes me want to hibernate with the heat on full and to watch old movies on the sofa all day. Alas, the latter is not possible, while well, not on weekdays anyway. Now, these months are difficult for those with a propensity towards depression, and it's an imperative time to take extra precautions against sinking into that deep pit of despair. Now, one of the things I do is ensure that I get out during the daylight hours and ensure that I take advantage of the dregs of the long-lit days that are left as the clocks went back an hour recently. Now, some people even employ the use of a light box and insist that it actually helps them during the long winter months. Now, the worst thing for me is the snow. I love the way it looks, but driving in hazardous conditions and living out in the sticks makes it much worse. Now, the birds fly south, and some of the people do too, to the warmer climes of Florida uh, that attracts so many. But I don't think I could leave New York, not permanently. Anyway, well, watch this space. Who knows what the future holds for little old Zanny G. I'm going to try and accept change and see what that brings. What will you do? Now, in other news, our brother, Sergeant Andrew Tamarisi, is home and free as a Mexican judge ordered his release. And I am relieved by this news. And like most of you, I am elated. Please pray for Andrew and his family, and I thank God for his freedom. And um, let's face it, this administration did zero to bring him home. Now that was Xander's Soapbox. If you'd like to get on your soapbox right here on Xandermonium, you can email me at xander at xandergib.com. That's xander at xandergib.com. And now it's time for Video Diaries. So as you know, I've struggled with weight issues for many years and I've tried every diet known to man. Now last week I started a cleanse in order to kickstart my weight loss using some of the Design for Health products. I was keen to do something that was safe and natural and not some quick fix to lose a few pounds that would be back within a few weeks. Now, as part of a long-term strategy, it's a great idea to do a cleanse to get rid of toxins and ease yourself into a healthier regime. Now, there are, more, there are many cleanses out there and the one I am using incorporates a real food um, protein powders in smoothies. Now, I never really believed that a smoothie uh, could fill me, but adding things like beetroot and asparagus and apple, orange, kiwi, kale, etc., um, all organic, of course, makes a difference. Now, a week into a 12-day cleanse, and I'm feeling so much better and even more energetic, my skin has even changed too. Now, I really recommend you consult your physician before you attempt any weight loss program in order to be monitored. Now, I made a little video, a diary of the first week, and you can check it out here.
So I'm here and I'm just about to go swim. And it's really hard. Um, and I've I've used every excuse and I've kind of like I've run out of excuses to go and get some exercise. And I think that although I want to do it, I know there's an emotional side to all of this. And I think that it's hard to go swim when you're a big guy, when you're trying to get fit because you feel like everybody is looking at you. And they probably are, and they probably don't even mean to. But it, it's it's kind of hard, And but I'm going to go do it. And I'm not doing this for anybody else now. I'm actually doing it for me because I need to get fit and healthy. Not, not just for career prospects or for any other reason, you know, to buy nice clothes. Although those things fit into it. But now it's for me. It's actually about me saving my life. So let's go swim and um, here goes nothing. So I swam for like an hour and uh, I'm dying now. I ache, it hurt. And as well as that, um, I wish I'd chosen a better time to go. I uh, went at like 3.30 in the afternoon, not thinking that there would be lots of cool school cool kids, if that was the case, school kids having swimming lessons there and obviously they laughed and pointed. And I'm glad in a way that I have swimmers here because I wear earbuds uh, to stop the water getting in. So I didn't hear half of what they had to say. And obviously once you're in the water, you concentrate on the swimming and, and get on with the matter at hand. Now I haven't done an exercise for a long, long time. So it was kind of hard for me to do. But I did it and um, I got an hour's exercise. But that's just the start of it. What did I learn from it? I think um, it's imperative to go earlier in the day when there are fewer people there because that way you get in and out and you get to do the task at hand rather than deal with um, people's attitudes. You can't fault children, you know, if it had been adults, it would have been a different matter, but it is very hard, but I have to do it. So, um, don't give up, get out there and exercise no matter what your size. So it's day three of my detox and I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, and my skin is amazingly different. I can't explain it. Um, also, I've been sleeping better. My back hurts today, but I think that's more to do with the position I slept in than anything else. Uh, I just had my hot water with lemon and I had my cold water with Celtic sea salt too. Can't get used to the taste of that, but they say it does you good, so I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm just about to tuck in to my little smoothie here. Uh, it's a breakfast smoothie. And I've got, uh, what have they got? And I've got um, coconut milk. Um, I've got asparagus. I have beetroot. Um, I also have um, an apple. And the, all of these are organic. They reckon if you eat organically during a cleanse that you... Um, do you stand a better chance of surviving? Go away, that's somebody trying to get me on Facebook. Um, so I'm doing well, I'm I'm getting there with it. And uh, it's cold today, so I'm sporting my leopard print Snuggie. Hope you like. So it's day five and uh, I'm feeling really good. My skin is fabulous. I've not been hungry on this plan at all. Um, everything's been really filling from the vegetable soup that I made to the shakes now or the smoothies should I say now the smoothies I never thought that a smoothie would fill me but these smoothies are filling and um, I think that it has a little bit to do with the fact that you add protein powder to uh, the smoothie along with the usual uh, vegetables that you don't normally add to your daily diet. So I'm just about to, I've had my hot water with lemon and my cold water with sea salt and I'm just about to tuck into this. This is my 
breakfast for today. Smoked salmon wrapped around cucumber. Now, I'm not usually a fish for breakfast fan, but it looks pretty tasty. So I'm going to go tuck into that. I'm going to try and go swim tomorrow. Um, it's really hard to kind of like put exercise into your daily routine when it's not usually there. But like I said, I've run out of the excuses now. And um, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this so I can have a better quality of life. And uh, I'm making these video diaries so that you out there can be inspired too. Because if Xander can do it, so can you. Hey, so it's day seven of my cleanse, and I'm feeling really good. I can actually tell that I have lost weight. I don't know if that is just water weight or whatever, but it's still weight. Um, I'm just about to go in and swim. Uh, let's hope there's not so lots of pesky kids there. And I also... Uh, Hope that I'm going to have the energy to do this and not feel as bad as I did last week when I swam. But they say the more you do it, the better it gets. So I'll see you on the other side. So I uh, just did my swim. I did six lengths more than I did last time. And um, although I'm really tired, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I feel like the more I do the more I can do. And I know that sounds cliched, but it's so true. And the tip I said about going earlier to the pool when there's less people in, it really works. So this is the first um, in a week's of, of video diaries for me, Xander Gibb. And if I can do it and I can get fit and healthy, uh, my size and my weight with my issues, so can you. Xander, it's back to you in the studio. So that was my video diary to document my journey back to health. A big shout out to my nutritionist, Randy Dukov. And if you'd like to share your video diary with us, you can email it to me at xander at xandergib.com. That's xander at xandergib.com. And now it's time for Watch the Space. Look out! So having many funny, talented, and interesting friends, I'm really spoiled for choice as to who to share with you guys next. So this week, I went to Laughing Buddha Comedy to check in with my good friend, Georgie Porgy, to talk to him about humor and to check out his stand-up. Let's check it out. Yeah, guys. Guys, we're going to uh, keep the show moving. We have two comics, then your headliner. Please stick around. You're not going to want to miss him. He's a very, very funny guy. This guy coming to the stage is another funny guy. Please, everybody, get your hands together for Georgie Porgy! Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> Focus. I'm Georgie Porgy. Yeah. Unless you catch me in Spain, where they like to call me Jorge Porgy. <laughs> Is everybody else? Awesome? Everybody else awesome here? Right, I'm here to tell you. Here's the thing. Like, here's the thing with awesome. If you think in terms of awe, awesome is really some awe. But you, but you want, you want the full awe. <laughs> then why, is, why, why, why are we talking awful? <laughs> How's the comedy club? It's awful. <laughs> we need a reservation. <laughs> Rock and roll. <laughs> Facebook, right? Facebook. Let me tell you something about Facebook. The more friends you have, the less of a friend you can be. <laughs> it's reality. Yeah. I actually have a friend who only posts the worst pics of himself so that he looks better in real life. <laughs> nah, I think it's working for him. <laughs> How about this? This is like, a, you know, I have an ongoing stress list, and um, here's a stress sign. Like, when you think you're not getting any likes, you're not, like, not even on the Facebook, you know, just like that, but that's stress, but, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I brought my stress list with me, so, uh, let's rock it. 
Alright, here we go. Stress. Stress. When you never roll up the chapstick, I mean you gotta stick your lip into the hole. <laughs> How about this one? How about this one? How about this one? When the sunglasses you're trying to find, they're on your face. Right? Only now it's darker, which makes them even harder to find. <laughs> it's really dark over here. Let's go. Stress. When rough drafts make you nervous. Ooh, rough. Or how about when you, when you pass on the puppy, you're like, not today, puppy. <laughs> or, or, or when... Or, got things to do. Or how about when the pigeon, the pigeons get you mad. You're like, get out of the way, pigeon. You know, with the pigeons in the rat race, too. But then we're like, you can fly. You know, that's our loophole against the pigeon not getting out of, out of the way. <laughs> Get out of the way, pigeon! <laughs> how, how about this one? How about this one? When someone's about to talk to you? When someone's about to talk to you? You decide to eat the crouton. <laughs> Alright, let's get off the stress. <laughs> so, so for Halloween, right? For Halloween? I was thinking about being Kel because I really like Kel now, so I think I'm gonna be Kel with like a seaweed kit, right? No, 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 no. Like I'm not, not just trying to be like, oh, but like looks Kel now, but no. Kel, no, like, like. No, Kel is like the opposite of hitting the iceberg. No, it really is. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I'm gonna name my firstborn Kel L for real. <laughs> Could be super king, but um. <laughs> But, um, you guys want to talk superstition? Superstition, right? Okay, alright, so like, you know, I knock on wood, you know, I knock on wood all the time, but like, what kind of results is the imaginary wood bringing in? You know? And then people hear like one of these, like, make them leave your heads, and like, wood is going to, uh, bring you better luck. <laughs> so... So I don't walk under ladders, right? I don't, I don't like, I don't like to walk under ladders. Like I'll, I'll walk around them, and then sometimes the ladder's like this, and then I'll give it like a limbo past it. But like, what happens if like, what happens if you're a homeless guy, right? And you're sleeping in your box, right? No, right. And then somebody puts like a ladder, like, <laughs> and you know, like, do you get like, do you get bad luck? Like, do you, do, or, or you already have bad luck, so maybe then. You'll have the best luck, like, in the whole entire planet. And that might be the formula to happiness. But you can't do it on purpose. Like, you can't, like, run on the bird shit and, like, step in crap on purpose. But, uh, rock and roll, everybody have fun. And, yeah, happy Halloween. George, George. <laughs> So I'm here at the stand with Georgie Porgy. So welcome to the show, Georgie. Tell us... Thanks for having me. Tell us a little bit about your comedy stylings. Ah, the comedy stylings are um, I'm a bit of a wordsmith, so I like to play with the words. Uh, silly, could be smart. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. The child, you know, the child, and um, yeah, just seeing things in a whole new light, kind of tripped out sense of perspective, altering, and. Yeah, you know, dealing with the rat race and the stress and the worry and all the want in our lives and, you know, getting laughs and laughing our way through it. So how long have you been doing comedy and what really inspired you to start doing stand-up? Okay, I've always, I've always been writing comedy in my head, you know, and then eventually onto paper, you know, lots of paper, you know, old school, lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of. You know, and then, um, yeah, in 2009, you know, we uh, tapped into some structure, and I did my first show at Gotham. Great. Right. And uh, it was a Jessica Kirsten show, and uh, yeah, Heckler and everything, and uh, you know, took some workshops, uh, D.F. Sweedler's workshop at the Comic Strip Live, it was my first workshop, and then, um, 
you know, just studying under Jeff Lawrence and Laughing Buddha Comedy, which we just come from the show. And it was a great show, and uh, yeah, learning. There's a lot of there's a lot to um, to stand up. There's a lot of rules and it's seconds and delivery and you know catch and flow. And then like you know you learn you learn you know you learn what to share and to share it in the shortest amount of time. So uh, blah 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 absolutely. So. Uh, some people would say there are certain subjects you don't touch uh, with comedy. Is there anything you won't joke about? Yeah, I don't mess with like I don't I don't really mess with relationships right now, you know, or you know like um or Ebola and like you know why not Ebola tragedy. Well, I feel people come to comedy clubs to escape all of that reality, you know, and just want to like, you know, laugh, like laugh. And it's hard to laugh when that's always in your conscious, unless you have really, unless the Ebola joke is killer, <laughs> well, then, you know, you can get away with the, with the smile on your face. But, uh, yeah, I don't really touch those. I like, you know, to tap into the child in us and, uh, yeah, like. Because some people would say that every subject is on the table. Like I, I heard, you know, I'm, I, I heard a guy telling an AIDS joke tonight, but he did it in such a way it was funny. Yes. Now, ten years ago, people wouldn't have, have have laughed about those those things. Do you think that laughter is good medicine, and does it help us to heal wounds? Sure, sure. I mean, sometimes it's you know it's too soon, you know, but uh, right. comics are gonna push it. But uh, yeah, you know. How soon is too yeah, soon? It's a fine line when you're dealing with subjects, you know, like that. But um, how soon is too soon? <laughs> like, like for instance, Gilbert Gottfried, the day after the tsunami, was made some joke on Twitter about you know um, Asian people and uh, you know one will float down the you know you wait ages for one and then one one or two will float down the river, and and he lost you know. Uh, sponsorship and stuff for that so maybe that was too soon yes yes too soon and um i don't know i like to treat it like an escape you know and i like people to just yeah not be hung up on stuff like that you know i mean you could talk about your marital problems and your children and you know there's endless humor in that but uh yeah, i just go somewhere else and uh yeah keep it lighthearted and uh yeah make you think a little bit scratch your head not and have a good time like have fun like that's okay so we we got to the point in the show now where we're going to do something called the quick fire questions round and it is basically what it says well, I, i'm going to i'm going to ask you a question and and i want you to give me uh your first response and and it's quick fire so it's not like uh your family history your life history it's just a very quick answer okay. so we're going to start now what question do you most hate to be asked <laughs> I flashed to my childhood right there. Um, is Georgie Porgy your real name? Okay, is Georgie Porgy your real name? Yes, yes. I can just see the uh, vicar uh, baptizing you right now. <laughs> I baptize this child, Georgie Porgy. Okay, uh, who is your idol? Right now, in any genre. I like Mark Maron right now. I'm really digging Mark Maron. Bill Burr makes me laugh as soon as he stops talking. Uh, okay, remembering it's quick fire. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, favorite TV show? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Um, right now? No, uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> well, what I'm watching now, I just got Hulu, so I'm watching Gotham and The Flash right. quickly, but I love Doc. Okay. Tacos or sushi? Tacos, hard shell, ground beef. Madonna or Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga. Walking Dead or Breaking Bad? Breaking Bad. Rice or pasta? Pasta. You find 50 bucks in church, do you A, put it in the collection, B, give it to the homeless guy outside, or C, do you put it in your pocket? Uh, put it in the in the community box and light fifty dollars worth of candles. <laughs> okay, paper or plastic? Oh, uh, paper. 
Name three celebs, living or dead, you, uh, you would invite for dinner, and what would you cook? Oh, okay. Uh, David Bowie. Oh, uh, oh uh, la, 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 Kate Blanchett. And... And Xander Gibb. Gibb. That's what I was just going to say, Xander Gibb. And what would you serve, food-wise? Oh, I don't know. Maybe lots of tapas? Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. The Cosbys or Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Hmm. The Cosbys. Oprah or Dr. Phil? No, Dr. Phil. Least favorite movie? The Stupids. Tom Ma Arnold. Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold? Yeah. Really, Tom Arnold? Okay. I would say um, Slash Oprah, but I, I haven't really seen Oprah in a while because I'm not really tapped in. All right, all right, all right. Like, Remember, like, it's quick, quick fire. Uh, which celebrity could you willingly slap? And don't say me. Oh, um, Katy Perry's ex-boyfriend comedian. The British guy, I agree. There's a line forming behind you. <laughs> all right. Um, favorite TV Muppet? Oh, the animal. And final question, law and order, criminal intent or special victims? Let's go special victims. I totally agree. And that was our quick fire questions round. So we're coming to the end of our time together. Tell people where they can find you on social media and, and where they can come and see your show. Okay, uh, YouTube, I have a channel, Georgie Porgy Stand Up. Uh, what else? Uh, I've been performing at The Stand. And um, do a lot of Laugh and Buddha comedy shows right now. And uh, yeah, we're uh, just trying to get up as much as we can and get comfortable on the stage. And yeah, Facebook, Georgie Porgy. Absolutely. So you hit it here first. Check him out on Xandermonium, Georgie Porgy. And check him out on Facebook and Twitter. Xander, it's back to you in the studio. So that was the inimitable Georgie Porgy. No pudding, no pie. Just great comedy. You can check him out most weeks at Laughing Buddha Comedy at the stand in the city. And don't forget to check out um, his social media pages and tell him that Xander sent you. Well, that's it for today's show. I hope you enjoyed it and that you'll join us next time. Don't forget to check me out on social media. And don't forget to check out Georgie Porgy. Today's show was brought to you by The Color Cerise and the number seven and courtesy of Madrigal Media. Thanks to everyone that contributed to the show. And most of all, thanks to you for watching. Stay cool in the boogie down and we will see you next time on Xandermonium. I love you all. Bye-bye. You know.